Me, reaching in to reach out. Date from Sunday the 26th of July to Saturday the 1st of August 2020. Time, morning session from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Afternoon session from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And evening session from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. each day. Join in as we listen to some renowned speakers from within and outside Ghana. Guest thematic speaker, Professor Kelvin Ononga, Adventist University of Africa, Kenya. Devotional speaker, Pastor Kusi Apia, Valley View University, Tachiman Campus. Seminar speakers, Dr. Mrs. Teresa Adai Mononkum, Senior Lecturer, College of Humanities and Legal Studies, University of Cape Coast. Dr. Jose Ando, Head of Theology Department, Regent University. Dr. Pascal Brunya, CEO, Focus Central Ghana. Elder Edward Nkansa, Economist and Consultant, Ministry of Finance. Pastor Ebenezer Kwei, Senior Lecturer, Department of Theological Studies, Valley View University, OEB Campus. This event will be streaming live on Hope TV Ghana, Hope TV Ghana Facebook page, NAS National Facebook page, NAS YouTube channel, and Voice of Hope Online Radio. For further inquiries, please contact 0264 172 704 or 0501-427-069 or 0246-784-296. Be a part of this and be blessed. The Adventist student, a builder for Christ. Hope Channel, changing lives. God, it's Friday. Today is the last of our seminars and God has been faithful to us. We want to thank all our viewers for always joining in with us and then we want to say that we are very grateful and we also thank you so much for your prayers. God bless you. We want to welcome you again to the 38th Ghana National Association of Adventist Students Congress 2020 and to today's seminar. Throughout the week, we've had uh, different presenters speaking to us on different wonderful topics, and I believe you've been blessed. Today, we come your way with another wonderful topic, Igniting the Entrepreneur Within. And to do that for us, we have Dr. Pascal Brunia, who is a lead facilitator for business and entrepreneurship track at Yali, West Africa, and the coordinator for Kufo Scholarship Program. He is going to do that for us, and I believe you'll be blessed. After he's spoken, there will be an interactive session, and viewers can send in their questions and contributions through the number 0559 I'm Lydia Kwe, your host. Stay tuned. Hello, Lydia. How are you? Fine. That was a very nice introduction, quickly. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to look at these topics, and I'm going to be as fast as possible. So greetings to you, and a special greetings to our Muslims, brothers and sisters, who is celebrating a special day today. Uh, okay, so for our friends and our folks, I just say happy Friday. Happy Friday. And it's a holiday, so you're enjoying yourself, and we can all come together. Now, we're looking at this topic, but we want to start from something that bothers everybody. And that is, why are you here? You are here for a purpose because there's a passing through moment for you. So your purpose is not your own. In fact, the opportunities that are available to you is for you to serve mankind, inspire them, improve them, and one way or the other, make their life better in any shape or form. What are we talking about? We're talking about our purpose. So talking about money, when was the last time you smelled money? Because we talk about money when we talk about business. And we talk about business when we talk about money. One of these days when you get a chance, just pass through the bank and make sure you have some of the fresh note and smell it. It smells so very good. God in his own wisdom didn't create us to be poor. Sometimes we actually brought up with quite a lot of mentality and some excuses why we can't do and go beyond where we are. So today we're going to look at this and it's for you, especially for you. Now we look at SWOT analysis. This is where we look at your strength. What is your strength? The things that you do extremely so well and that everybody acknowledge you for it. Wonderful. That's your strength. And then we look at the opportunity. 
And these opportunities are the low-hanging fruits that are right in front of you and require little or no effort for you to plug it or seize it. How was the last time you did this? Today, as we go together, take your pens and papers and come along with me. Because I need you to identify your own strengths and your opportunities. And what are your aspirations? The things that you aspire to be, you want to become and achieve through the next three years, the next 12 months, the next 100 days. Put it all together. Because every day when you walk out from your house, you should have a reason. And that is when we actually say you are walking purposefully. And it's important for you to do that. Because when you are confused, you can walk and there's an accident. You are not a nurse, you are not a doctor. But you could stay there until whoever involved in this accident is dead before you go. Three hours gone. No. Who pays you for that? That is not your responsibility. So again, walking purposefully is very important. And of course, when you walk purposefully, you are actually supposed to also walk what, decisively. Are you walking decisively? This is a great message. And then we go to the last but not the least, which is the resource. You see, the results you would like to achieve at the end, and how are you going to achieve it, and how are you going to measure it? Are you really working towards your goals, and are you achieving these goals? This is very important. Now, this has bring us on to the whole subject of entrepreneurship. Put it quite simple. Entrepreneurship, by definition, is solving problem. Ability to identify problem and solve it. When was the last time you ran away from a problem? When was the last time you actually got yourself engaged in a conversation and then you actually adding up to the excuses, thousand and one of them, who have to solve them? And that's where entrepreneurs are called. And that is how we actually look at it. But interestingly, you know, in the Bible, anytime there is obstacle, anytime there is a problem, God in his own wisdom provides opportunity. Let me use one man. In the Bible, you all know very well he was very short. He's destined so much to see a man called Jesus. And he did everything possible. But you see, he saw a tree and he got himself on top of the tree. Opportunity is the tree. The man's deficiency, obstacle, is the low height. The man's Zacchaeus. He not only saw Jesus, but he became a host for Jesus. Think about it. Anytime preparation meets opportunity, success is inevitable. Your preparation must be adequate to avoid you living on this planet, on this earth, and sometimes dying when your music is still playing. No, that is not your portion. You cannot live average, work average, educated yourself or get education averagely, and then your lifestyle becomes so average. Worship averagely and die averagely. Now, you're going to go into a place that is in between heaven and hell because there's no place that is average in heaven. Think about it. So anytime there is obstacle, there is opportunity. Now I pray that you identify your opportunity. Now it will allow you to know that this is a time and it's a call in our movement as young people to start thinking about becoming entrepreneurs. Why am I saying that? The record is there. 2.3 million workers, people who work, monthly salaries, die every year. When you break this down, it's about 600,000 every day. Stress at work, troubles and pains that they go through all the time. So the message is simple. It's all right. You have two missions on this earth, to impact and also make money. What is your impact so far? Because remember, you can only give what you have. Let me continue. You can write this down and later on you can do your own assessment and get the results. It will amaze you to know the kind of entrepreneur you can become. Whether you are a student or you are still in a business, you will be able to really find that out because this is critical. Do you want to win? Remember the quotation from Ellen White. The secret of success is the combination of two things. Divine power or divine favor plus human effort. Now today we are focusing more on the human effort. If you look at all form and shape of entrepreneurs, you also realize that when we talk about the issue of entrepreneur, it actually comes in a different classification. And this classification could fit you because you can actually be in a corporate environment, but you want to be different. You want to change things. You want to distract the status quo. You just want things not to be done the same business as usual. And that is why we called ourselves today 
We call ourselves today because we cannot still rest on all the theories that we get in our academic institution. And then we get a certificate on top of it. And the results you and I do know becomes unemployment. We don't need to follow that suit. Which part of your brains do you favor? Are you the right or the left? There are quite a lot of activities you can go go right now. You know, I'm speaking to high tech young people who have access to internet. You can go go to find out to develop your right side of the brain because research has proven that the right brain allows you to identify opportunities and also seize it. So no wonder sometimes opportunity is right there, but you're not seeing it. In your academic institutions, are you seeing opportunity there? I'm going to share quite a number of them with you. But look at the screen carefully. Count quickly. How many F do you see in this statement? Count them quickly. Wherever you are, shout your answer. Did you get it right? I've seen somebody who sits right in front, looking at it right now, and got three. Some got four. Some got five. I'm not too sure which one is your result. But now count it again. It's six. So my question to you is this. Even when you look, what do you see? This is interesting. Now, let's follow through. This is developing the creativity nature God has given to you. The right side of your brain. And I believe that when the presentation is over, some of you need to go and hit your head and hit your foot on the ground. Asking God, God, give me that kind of wisdom of idea that I will be able to create impact and make money. Poverty is not your portion. That is the conclusive statement. Who is seated on the sofa? Is it a young man or a young lady? Look at it carefully. What was your answer? You are still debating on it. Now look at your screen very well where you are. I would like you to read the colors you see but not the words. Don't pronounce the words, but the colors. So, so read along. Reading from yellow as it starts to the end. But you're not going to mention yellow. You're going to actually tell me the colors you see but not the words. Have you gone through? Did you get it right? How fast were you able to read it? Put it quite simple. You see, your right brain tries as much as possible to read the colors. But unfortunately, the way we were programmed like robots in our study lines. Recently, I was chatting with a group of people even about the way we study. If you want to cram things in your head, what do you do intelligently at your schools? Many of us will have to rewrite it down, put it, and keep on chewing. And sometimes you are talking and people don't even know what you're saying. And I said to people, why don't you put your phone down and record? Read the entire notes. And when you finish reading the entire notes, put your headphone and listen to yourself. You can listen to yourself once, two, and I can bet you the third time you are listening to the audio, before you could hear your voice from the audio, your mind has already said it, and it's a guarantee that it's already in your head. We are here to distract the status quo. We can't do business as usual anymore. We want to change the things. African hope is you. The change for Africans comes from you. Now, can you tell me how to take this apple from the bottle? I remember my years back in KNUSC, one of the programs, somebody said, no, 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 Doc, as a matter of fact, it is not inside the bottle. I said, look, instead of answering questions, you beg questions. I said, it's inside the bottle. Tell me how you're going to take it out. That's the question. Can you do that? If you can do that, then you are thinking entrepreneur. You are really thinking of how best you can create opportunities, how best you can impact people. Let's go quickly then. How many boxes do you see? Now, quickly, people say that I should share this. How do you take it out? How do they take it out? This was actually given. As this particular slide is from my good friend called Kama, Dr. Ajakum Ado. You know, and this is how the demonstration goes. When the apple was smaller, they actually hung the bottle on the tree. And those of you who are Greek students, follow me. Because the cork or the top is open, pollination can still take place. So the apple actually grew inside the bottle. And after that, they unplugged it, and that is it. They didn't cut it and put it and seal it. No. I didn't know how your answers were at your house. But the truth of the matter is that that is what they did. My question to you, which is also another biggest challenge, how do you take the apple from the bottle without destroying the bottle? Think about that as I move on. How many squares do you see over here? And I like how it puts here. Every day, innovation is what needs to happen. What have you innovated recently? Your own environment where you find yourself. Every part of your body can create business. Is it your voice? Think about music. Is it your nose? Smell different perfumes. Is it your tongue? Taste and get money. Your eyes, look well and take good photo. I love to see females in photography. I have a lot of message for you. Your structures is so thick. You look so big. 
What do you think that is for? <laughs> Not to boot and piss people away. No, it's for you to create business and money opportunity. That is what we're talking about. Your hands, people greet you and your hand, your palm is so soft. And they say, oh yeah, beautiful palm. No, 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 no. You know why God gave you that palm? He wants you to be specialized in massaging people and taking dollars in your pocket. You can get money. Every part of you, you know, your hands are good. You can braid. Every part of you can create money. Start thinking about vocation. Don't go through mainstream university education and pick up the theories and become a master of theories and reproduction of it. But no, you need to be able to sit back and say, what can I do to upgrade myself even while I still at the university? Most often when I meet a group of young people, I can always say, look, learning to drive and have a valid driver's license is a must. You don't joke about that. Learning to speak another language is a great thing. You've got to do it while you are still in school. If you have passport or maybe not, you need to make it happen. Can you master one sport? Can you master one musical instrument? Would you be able to learn how to swim and do it so very well? You never know which part of your physique, your talent or potential God has given to you that can make money. And you are sitting on God. Don't die while your music is praying. Let's move on. And then we look at the organs God has given us and the sense that you can use and the opportunities that it can create as well. As you look at this from your eye to your ear to skin to nose to tongue, all of them speak volumes. So again, I have established the fact that in fact, entrepreneurship is identification of problems and providing solutions. And that is, if you look at the picture on the top left, what seems to be the problem? Draft. At the bottom, what is it? The woman would dig deep onto the ground. They create these trenches. So when it rains, waters can be accumulated or sit on there. Just think about that. The young boy is drinking from a filthy water. What is the solution? This is exactly what they do. Now, let me get us focusing on how to find solution to a problem. And I want us to focus on the third image. Look at the woman. What problem do you want to solve? in your lifetime? What opportunity you want to seize? Let's look at that woman. If I ask you to tell me what solution would you provide for the woman? I can bet about 90% of people will agree that provide her with electricity. That is a quick way. But is that the best? Ask yourself, can she afford to pay for electricity? Ask yourself, will she be in the condition and in situations where this woman will be able to operate the cable wires around without getting herself electrocuted. Think about it. So you can rise and think you are finding the solution to a problem by adding to the problem. Africa needs you. You gotta think beyond. And that's why innovation and creativity comes in. Now, when we talk about brain writing, I know you are familiar with what we call the brain storming. This is a bit different. This is where you write things down. Now, it is caption 635 because, you know, this caption just explains exactly what it means. And it will actually surprise you that this is a very simple technology that you can use to solve any problem at all. So, for instance, if NAS realized that we seem to have a lower turnout in our congresses, we can create the problem statement. And we'll put it down and say, okay, good. So what is the way forward? What can we do to increase and double the numbers? That is a problem statement. And then each person have a paper, rule a line. So, you know, six participants write down three ideas on a worksheet in five minutes. And that is why brain writing 635 comes from. You will be surprised. Nobody talks to each other. You look at the problem statement and state what you want to say. You pass it on to the person on your right, and that person look at what you have written, may actually enhance it or come up with something new and add to it. You will pass this on, and when it goes one, you have almost about 180 ideas because each single person write three different solutions. And based on this, you will follow through to do what we call affirmative diagram. The affirmative diagram is then group it. So some are suggesting that we need to be able to help and catch them young, even when they are junior secondary school. We need to make NAS Congress attractive. We need to make sure that at least classes are organized. So some will suggest that the programming need to be this. It tends to be too religious. Can we add a bit of religion and also add other things that people want to hear? It tends to be too academic. Can we dilute that and make sure that at least when people come to it, do we include entrepreneurship? Do we really get people handy and could people learn how to 
do something why they are there all these are things so you group them and by grouping them this is where affirmative diagram comes in and then you actually do what we call the group ideas and this you actually put them into interrelationship diagram i'm speaking a bit fast but i really would like you to write the headings and later on when you google this you can find out and learn how to do it best let me talk about design thinking but before design thinking comes or design driven entrepreneurs came to the scene this is how people see it depending on where you stand but design driven entrepreneurs look at something very carefully your point of view is right but it's a human centered so i'm going to concentrate exactly what you are seeing have a look at these pictures this led into what we call design-driven entrepreneurship. And this design-driven entrepreneurship is critical because if things are not designed well, there's always that confusion. There's always that difficulties. There's always that challenge. No, and because of that, individuals are not being able to get things and get it right. Look at all the design. What is so much faulty about the designs that you see on the screen? Poor design. Before coronavirus kicked in, one of the talk about in the world was a very expensive, over millions of dollars aircraft. Three of them went down, killing important people. Bad design. Bad design costs life. Bad design is not acceptable. But can you really look at what is already there? That is you. Right now, is there anything that you see around you that can be best designed? Are you ready to distract the status quo? So the process of design thinking is you listen, you connect, and you create. The process of listening is doing your research, empathy. You define exactly what the problem is. And then that's when the idea comes. So you ideate it. And then when you create it, you do a prototype or minimum viable product. And when you do that, you test it. And when the test goes so well, then you go back and produce it. The system is a good system that will help. Once again, we are here on this earth for one thing, young people, to distract the status quo. Business as usual must stop. Customer obsession. We are focusing on the customer. Who is the customer? What would the person be interested in? Is the human center, remember? And then we move on into something that we call building to be able to find out how people live their life. So I use a young man who is very busy, work in a corporate environment, hardly have time for anything, have a lot of management that goes on in and out. But simply put, this man need help. So you said, sir, if you want somebody to pick your children, I will do that. I will feed them. I will teach them. I will do everything. When you come home, you just hug them for them to go to bed. I'm going to take a great portion of your burden. And by that, go into your pocket and pay me. Yes, people will pay you things that you do to take their stress and burden away from them. And that is very important. That is very, very important. Now, how do we come up with what we call sympathy? And from sympathy, we look at empathy. But when it comes to business entrepreneurship, we are focusing on what we call the empathy map. The empathy map is put yourself in the situation of the person. Can you think and feel what the person is feeling? Can you hear what they are talking about? Do you see where they go? When you put it all together, in the end, the person have a pain or gain. But each of these processes where you come in as an entrepreneur for you to be able to what? give the person what they need most. And if you do something, well, it's how many people will say, you know, dog, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have money. And I said, look, you know, with, with a great idea and tenacity, you will be able to make it different. And sometimes you, you, you be, you, you, your business evolves and becomes something that people will look at it. When you get trash and people will follow you and banks will chase you and want to give you money. We'll be coming practical very soon. But before we do that, let me just skip and talk about business model canvas. This is one great design that also help you in thinking through the business line. And this is also to waking up your business mind of the right brain. What are the key activities that you are going through? Who are your key partners, your key resources? Now, this explains it very well. So anytime you think about business model canvas, whether it's existing business, or whether it is actually a new business, you might want to subject it into this. And this is it. Who would you help or who do you like to help? How would you do it, your key activity? What do you need to be able to do what you want to do? And what do you do? And then more especially, 
why is your doing different from somebody else? Why is your product or service different from somebody else? It's very critical. And that is where answer a lot of questions. So when it comes to the business model canvas, then you ask your question, how do you interact with customer relation? And how do you reach them? Customer distribution. And how do you help them? Customer, sorry, who do you help? Which is your customer segment. You segment your customers and you know them. And finally, at the bottom, we look at what and how you're going to cost your product and how much would it even cost you and how much are you going to sell it. This is very critical. A classical example is what I've put on the screen right now. If you look at it, it's production of lemon. And this is really beautiful. It tells you each of the stages that we have gone through. Again, you can Google this and find this out for yourself. In the first time, every idea is upset. And people will say there is no hope in them. An idea that is not dangerous is unworthy of being called an idea at all. Think about it. Ideas go through three stages. One, people will say it cannot be done. Two, they say it probably cannot be done. But it is not worth doing. People will say that. And finally, they will say, I knew it was a good idea all along. You see how people change their mind? Are you thinking about something? Let's consider a few business areas that we have neglected. And this is how it's going to be fun. The health and nutrition. Think about it. These are areas that I really want us to start thinking. Can we evolve? Can we add to it? Can we change the way we've been doing it for a very long time? Look at this. Ideas comes into your mind. Online fitness. Nutrition. All these are ideas and businesses that you can consider and will generate quite a lot of ideas. Agro-business. This is a classical. Look at it. Can you develop seed for people to plant so that they don't go to the hustle and bustle? Think about it. Horicotcha. Ginger. Things that people want now. People really. And it says that produce what you eat daily and sell it in a weekly. Think about it. This is really beautiful. And this one, I have a good news for women out there. Ladies out there, if you are actually from the age of about 20 plus, you know, the young lady who is an Adventist, and I'm so proud of her. This is her company, and she is working through this industry. Every single person who want to be part of agro-business, write these details down. What's up here? And more importantly, visit the website, and you'll be able to find out some of the things that will amaze you. They have a piece of land already, and they put people together and trade them across Africa, and it's doing so very well. You want to be part and change the way things are done. Food processing. Think it through. This is amazing. Anything comes into your mind? I love to see women getting their hands and fixing things. Could you get them fixed things? Is it possible? Are you considering this? Affordable mobile solutions. Would you be the one who would be able to really say it all and do all? Think about it. Social media. These are all areas you can go. Let's look at those who are in teaching and, and, and those who have experience of writing books. What kind of books can you write right now? I was in Nigeria, one of our conferences, and a young lady handed me over the book that you see on your right. And that book was Safety for Children. And there are so many things, so, so, so many things. And these many things that you see are things that can be done. So language like French, cooking nutritious food and teaching children. This, we're talking about children. Teaching children IT skills and financial illiteracy. Could you think about doing that at this moment when people need? Become the local logistics. We were speaking to one great man who is now a millionaire. And he said, one of the things I started doing is going to the villages and buying things and bringing it to the city to sell. Look at the things that you see on your screen. Can you get it from the village you come from? Bring it to Accra. Get a motorbike or tricycle. Get them to distribute to the people. Today, awaken your entrepreneurial spirit. Let me move on. People shop online. Friends calls. Friends have network they created. So friends and family abroad, this is where you use them. You can also have a platform where you share these information and you can actually order the things and sell it to friends by just adding a little percentage and taking it to them. Has that come into your mind yet? Let me also wow you again. Carpentry. Think about it. Form of carpenters. I really realize that most of the people who are middle agents are not the ones who do the job, but they have a carpenter somewhere. You see, this is where education becomes a must. You're educated. You touch everything. Even when you peel orange, the way you peel it is different. 
So that's what I'm talking about. Every form of shape of carpentry, take it as part of yours. Do better furniture for people. Provide people room dividers. You know, one of my old looking seats was going bad. I almost threw it away. One of my yallians said to me, Doc, I can change it and transform it. One on your left that you see over there. And it became so very beautiful. It became so very beautiful. And that is exactly what it is. We're also looking at the road side. You know, let me go back because that is, that is the picture I was showing before. Okay, so now I share with you. Okay, now, roadside money. Can you roast? Can you get somebody who is roasting? Can you set two people, three people up for them to roast something? Kelewole, almighty Kelewole. You might be able to do it as graduate on vacation and have money in your pocket. I'm talking and breaking this down. And I think by the time I finish, you actually, to reduce the questions, Lydia, you want to lead us for us to do. You know? And if you look at Coco King, they have this big looking bofu, that's why I call it. Can you sew that and that come with granite? Modern mechanics. Look at this picture. It will surprise you to know that if you modern mechanics like clinical work, it's like medical doctors. At the moment, they use all the gadgets. If you are not educated, trust me, you are out of business. Are we getting the young people to go into this industry to make a difference? That is what we are talking about. You have an access. You can do it. Sports, one area that we feel we are not part of. Why not? We are part. Because sports require almost every single facet of studies that we've done at the university. What do you want to become in sport? You're not playing it yourself. You can become a coach or a referee. Remember that. You can be a psychologist or physiotherapy. You know, you could be a nurse or a doctor. You can actually deploy it. And talking about businesses even in the church, there are people, and I have a very good Seventh-day Adventist who is a secretary for one of these one-man churches. That is his profession, his job. So you go to church on Sabbath, and Sunday he go to do business. These people need all these people, and so we do. Now media become one of the great, are you part of the dean? media people? Are you part of the OSHA's team? Can you really make sure that you are so relevant in your time that you can make money and create impact? Let somebody say thank you by taking money as well. I saw a young lady who is a nurse waiting to be posted and I was surprised when he says to me, he used the local robe and pack a few things and call it a first aid box and he give it to PTA people. Parents, parents at the PTA he'll go and announce it and parents buy it and give it to their ward at the secondary school. I said, this is a nurse with a purpose. She doesn't want to stay home. I've seen some of them just have a few things around them, have their ID card, going around to the mechanics. And they're going around to places that people hardly go, the, the, the supermarket, the shops that hardly have time to go to the hospital. And what are they doing? They actually taking their blood pressure, their weight, and, and advising them. In fact, they see them as doctors, but they are doing a good job. And if they suspect anything, they have a hospital to do referrals. Go and see the hospital. Let's do proper tests over there. And, and I love that. I love that. Again, thinking and making your time relevant. That is what we're talking about. Creative industry. We've left it. When it comes to the movies industry, the cameraman producers, you know, sometimes people feel this is not our job. Whose job is it? If we want to get it right, how do we get it right? Things can't be done right until you decide to touch it. So all these industries are waiting for you. I saw a few in a shop around and I saw some like key ring. Key rings that we use as opener. Key ring as pen drives. Key rings for various forms and shape. And guess what happened? At the end, I'm asking myself, why can't we have a key ring with lip balms on it? If you have a lip balm on a key ring, then that will help in hamatan days, right? In the same way, you would actually have a key ring during COVID time, which actually have sanitizers in them. Think about it. It's just thinking out smoothies of various forms and shape. Make it different. No sugar. Soya milk, cashew milk, date syrup, honey. Stuff them. Blend it. Let people pay money. You are healing people. You are making money. You are creating impact. Popcorn on the side for somebody to take care of it. Look, I love this shito. Ignore the shrimp that you see there, but it's just beautiful. That is what it is. Are you thinking about shito? Shito hot, hot shito. Shito in between. Modric shito. I really, by the time this presentation is over, and very, very soon, because Lydia is asking me to hurry up and I'll do that very quickly. By the time it's over, I really want you to get out. Put your pen and paper down. You, you've done this enough. We study. You are academically inclined. You are good. But the theory is over. We're going to walk the talk. Do something. Poverty is not your portion. It is not your portion. I'm telling you. Bread. Bake it. As a matter of fact, we're having a conversation before this program. And I asked Lydia, how many days did God ask us to work? And she said, six days. I said, do we work for six days? He said, no. I said, that's why we are poor. 
God said, work six days. For some strange reason, why do you pack all your clothes and make it dirty so the whole Sunday you stay home to wash? Who said we should do that? We are here to distract the status quo. That's what is it. That's our mission on this earth. Why can't we just wash every evening before we sleep? By the time we get to Sunday, you have a full Sunday. On Friday, you are, you are putting your bread together. On, 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 no, no, not on Friday. On Saturday, you are putting the bread together. Or on, on Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, you, you don't have oven. So you're going to see the woman who is going to church and, and rent her oven and, and bake the bread. And by the time the church is over, you have a fresh bread in front of their church and about almost 600 people in one church. Everybody picking a, a, a bit of loaf from you. How, how much bread would you sell? How much is the cost of flour? And you do this in partnership with somebody. Call somebody. You know, sometimes you can have an idea, but somebody have the money. You can team up. You don't need a huge amount of money to start. Have our soaps, different kind of soaps. Make it nice and sweet and juicy. What do you see over here? People say toilet roll. These aren't toilet roll. This is a scented toilet roll. A couple walk into the production of toilet roll and he said, oh, can you put perfume in? They said, oh, no, we don't put perfume in toilet roll. This has never been done. Remember, the classification ideas go in. People rubbish it before it becomes an idea. And they insisted, and they did. And when this toilet roll came up, trust me, I don't think everybody in Ghana have actually had the feel of it. But if you take a piece of this toilet roll and you wipe your body, you actually do it with that confidence. You know, let me go on with two people you see over here. These guys have seen a lot of failures in their lives. But guess what? When they were denied a job, they were home, unemployed. But they have graduated in IT. Among other places, they went seeking for a job. It's Facebook. Within a short time, they came up with WhatsApp. The faces you see are the guys who came up with WhatsApp. And guess what happened? Facebook approached them and paid them $16 billion. What does that tell you? In bringing this presentation to the close, let me just mention quickly. A man who one day visited his father in the father's living room, there was a TV. And the TV, the commentator was going on and said, if somebody can find a solution to a problem, football will be fine. And guess what it was? There was a foul. When the referee put the ball there, before he could root the line for people to stand and stand there for him to referee on, people would jump closer to the ball. It was going on for five minutes. It was getting boring. He came back home, took his shaving foam, put it on the floor, and was there forever. He went to the company that provided the shaving foam and said, can you add something to make this one visible? And within a short time, vanished. And they said, we haven't done it before, but we can add papins and vegetables. He said, go ahead. They did only one boss for him. This guy took it to FIFA and said, FIFA, I have a solution for you for football. That is what we call magic spray in football. Somebody got to think. Somebody got to make a difference. Can you make a difference? Two slides and I'm done. Last but one. A guy who goes to hotels and beg them, pick the pieces of soap, wash and rewash this soap, he beat them all together into bar of soaps with volunteers, and he shipped it to Africa, that every African child should wash their hands before they eat. After a time, the hotel were chasing and bringing the soap, because to them it's a waste. To him, it helped an African child to wash their hands. What is more godly than this? You create impact, and you make money. Think about it. And this is a classical definition of social enterprise, the one that I just gave. Finally, you see young people every day dreaming and doing something great. What you see on your screen is condom, and you are right. Two 14-year-old and one 13-year-old shocked the whole health industry. They woke up and they said, we have a solution for you right now. You don't need to worry. And this, of course, is recommended for married people, remember that. But if you put this condom on and you actually become contact with a woman, immediately the condom will change con color according to the disease the woman possesses. Think about it. It doesn't take days for you to get results. Is it chlamydia? Is it gonorrhea? Is it HIV? What is it? You will be able to tell the color of the condom according to the disease the person possesses. Are you thinking, has this challenged you enough? This is what we're talking about. This is entrepreneurship. Lydia, I'll leave it here, and maybe when the questions come, we'll continue from there. Wow. So thank you so much for your time. Oh, Elder, thanks so much for um, such an educative lecture. Every time a preparation meets opportunities, success is inevitable. 
to our viewers, the interactive session will begin shortly. And once again, you can send your contributions and your questions to the number 0559-680066. 0559-680066. But before that, we'll go on a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> God has specially given us Hope Channel Ghana to be a special avenue for mission and ministry. I believe you all want to keep Hope Channel on air to come out with spirits filled, mission oriented, cutting edge programs. That is why I would want to encourage all of us to give bountifully even as they have this fundraiser on the 1st of August. Give bountifully towards this worthy cause. May God richly bless you as you contribute bountifully. Amen. Hope Channel, changing lives. Hope Channel, your channel be a boy. Mira, you kwa not here. It's me a boy and your program in your ma and car as I say you are so near you to me, you know, or more to me to a mosso, a boy, a ma, it me tea, sermons, and near me, but boy, am I to me, you know, in poor more boy, and my issue, and you may be brave, fire pump with the year come. Your spiritual life in poor, it to me cause in ye, a be emblem. But you are on a say, whole channel program, a doom pump and sua won't be yam war, if you will be better or together. You be better what we are for them, you Yes, sir. Buanya me, Juma, through Hope Channel. If so, wouldn't him say, Sika Ketuano, the bet me a bomb will be a tien and yasem, will be a satra, am a radi, not do do no to me, see, see, ye home, am a yes to Christ to the Maya to Sumino. A radin shrow, so be boa hoop channel, radin shrow, so be cause a bomb pie, now will bet our shape hoop channel, am I a radin shrow with Jesus, dear Amen. Hope Channel, changing lives. Come back, lovely viewers. This is the interactive session for today's seminar. And for those who just tuned in, we want to welcome you again to the 38th NAS Congress and also to today's seminar dubbed Igniting the Entrepreneur Within. Um, for our viewers, the number remains 0559 You can send in your questions and your contributions. Doc, welcome again. Thank you. I um, want to welcome you to the interactive session. Thank you. Okay, so I would want you to clarify this for us. Um, from your submission, can we conclude that we can all be entrepreneurs in one way or the other? Yes, I think everybody who has a potent, got potential mm -hmm. talent can be an entrepreneur. You know, the thing about this is that is it one size fits all is not true. Okay. Sometimes I think even the lecturers at the university, I mean, we try as much as possible. I mean, if I ask those who go to uh, polytechnics and sometimes even first degree, mm -hmm. you ask them, um, your entrepreneurship is probably level 100. By the time you finish, you don't even remember anything. It's a typical chew and pull. But now I've seen that some lecturers are doing it differently. When you come, think of a business idea that you want to start, start it right now. Start commercializing it while you are still in school. By the time you finish, you are making people become. So again, when we talk about entrepreneurship, it is simply identifying problems and providing a solution. Okay. We cannot do things the way we used to do it. Look at how COVID has got us doing things so differently. Mm. It has pushed us to a level. Things are going to change. Now we say two hours for worship. Certain things are going to cut off. So as pastors, what are you going to cut off now? Is there anything that is going to be cut off. Yes, you have to be compelled to cut things off. So the point is that you become innovative. You look at how things are done. Can you do things so comfortable okay. for people? Look at the issue of television. Before years, you know, you go and television, you have to get up anytime to go and change it. Now you have 100 channels, right? Mm -hmm. Most people, when you go to your houses, the part that you stick your fingers as the paint has wear out. <laughs> It's because you have to get up. Mm -hmm. And somebody sat down and said, uh-uh, remote control can mm -hmm. do. So you sit back, do remote control. So again, things are going. Now, it shouldn't leave us behind. And when I see young people sometimes spending time on necessary things, when there's a problem, they are part of the problem for them to even sometimes argue about the problem. And I said, can you find a solution to the problem? The elders are not doing well, so what can you do differently? 
And sometimes it is so important. So every single person has the ability to identify a problem. And besides, you'll be able to provide solution or you can get people to provide solution for it. So we are all potential entrepreneurs, one way or the other. All right. Thank you, Doc. And do you, you mentioned earlier that you, have, you can start in school, even in level 100. Oh, yes. Do you need money to actually become an entrepreneur? Something then, great. Because Something great. I say that with a wonderful business idea, and this is what we call the Tala, Erika Erika moment. You see, we all need to have that kind of moment. Think. Today, I have just kind of provoked your thoughts. You're thinking. Before you go to bed, think. You get into Sabbath. What is a better mood for you to ask God? Give me an idea that will make a change. Because I'm here on this earth to distract what? The status quo. Not business as usual. So think. Is the thinking. We need to think. We need, what inconvenience you? What brings you discomfort? Can you find solution? What do you struggle in your neighborhood to buy? When you're on campus, what are some of the things that makes it very difficult, stressful for people on campuses? Can you do something different? Mm -hmm. That is exactly where it starts from. So you don't really need a huge amount of capital to start. You can have a wonderful idea with tenacity. You will make everything happen. And that is how it, so I can tell you 1,001 businesses that I know, that started from nothing. Okay. And now it has become big. Wow. It's all because they start thinking through, and they said, I'm going to begin it. A young lady went to her church, pick up widows, 10 of them, and he went around East Ligon. Look at a spot, 10 places. And then what he did, he bought those pan, put ashes and charcoal, you know, that they used to roast plantain. Yeah. And he set these women up and gave them a bit of customer service training, 10 of them. You know what he does? The women buy their own plantain, but he has got you a place. He has negotiated for the place. How she was looking at the place, we were going around telling people that, you know, my mother needs to sell to support me. And she got 10 places for this woman. Took them from church. Pastor has blessed him for this business. And guess what? Every day, she picked just 50 Ghana cities from each of these women. Mm. It's legal. If you take one stick of plantain, you can cut it over five or 10. <laughs> one piece costs one city. So the women, they were joyful. The only thing they have to pay is 50 cities. Multiply the 50 cities by 10 people. I'm telling you, by the end of the month, the young lady is taking 10,000 Ghana cities home. Wow. You work in a bank? Mm -hmm. Do you work in a, for the ministry? You can never be rich like that. Think about it. And it's the impact, impact, helping widows. And at the same time, so you create impact and make money. Great impact and make money. Thanks, Doc. Um, this is from Emmanuel. He says, can you again show the mobile number of the agro-business lady? I think the uh, slides. You have the slides, so you can And someone is also asking for the slides. So that will the also slides, be you, you can All have right. it. Thank you, Doc. Okay. And this is from the, the, there's no name here. A very big thank you to Doc for his presentation. I'm actually glad he touched on the creative industry. My question is, how can I develop my potential in pursuing filming? And what are some guidelines to follow? You know, somebody called me recently and a person says to me, I have a music, I don't know how to do it. And I said, look, go to OKFM and go and hang <laughs> over there. If you see Abiku Santana coming up, just go. So Abiku, I don't know you from anywhere, but I tell you what, I've heard your name, you're doing well. I just want to congratulate you what you're doing. But I need you to make me what I am. Mm -hmm. I'm coming through you. <laughs> this is my music. Please listen to it. This is a CD. This is a pen drive. Go and listen to it. And please, this is my number. You know, it, it doesn't take much for you to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's saddening me to see young people when they die, when their music is still playing. <laughs> this is your moment of time. And your relevant is your responsibility. You can decide to be relevant or not. You know, when you are in a church, local church, and people are meeting, they don't call you. means you're not relevant, to be honest with you. <laughs> If they're talking about health and you're a nurse and then you are not being called. If they're talking about mechanics and that's your profession. If they're talking about teaching and they don't seek, then it means that you've not, you've not really positioned yourself to make yourself relevant. And sometimes I think um, religiosity has made so most of us think a little timid. I don't want them to know, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you can match. And then if you have other people who yeah. uh, mindfully, they are not up there. So they talk down to you. You cannot make any achievement. And if you become dizzy, you know, it shows that you are proud. And it, so people who have money doesn't mean showed. If I ask you to show me Adventists who are wealthy, it's going to be difficult to be mentioning them because they don't know what they have. But we need to bring up, we need to change the way things are done. You need money. Everything that you do, money is important. Even when it comes to salvation, you need to save people's life. You have to reach them. How do you do that? It's money. We need the money. We need people. I love to see young people like you graduating from university and you go to a church that has a fundraising and it's 20,000 Ghana cities. And two of you come right and say, 20,000? You are wasting people's money. Please, stop the harvest. We're paying for it. 
10,000, 10,000. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's my desire. That's what I really hope for these young people. It must happen. And the time is now. It must happen. And the time is now to all our young people out there. This one says, good afternoon. Perfect and excellent presentation, Doc. Please, you need a huge capital before you can become an entrepreneur, start a business. Okay. You know, when you draw a business plan, and I use a business model, if you look at it, to be very honest with you, you need great partnership. And this partnership is where your network becomes big. Okay. I think if you look at your phone right now, and you don't have about three medical doctors, you don't have about two nurses, <laughs> you don't have a lawyer on your phone, you don't have businessmen on your phone, trust me, I don't know what journey you are on. <laughs> you are not working decisively and purposefully. Some people will pick their phone from top to down. Just 500 Ghana City for somebody to borrow you, you don't have a friend like that. What kind of friend have you got? Who chose your friend for you? God will do his part. The rest of them is yours. You know, I know people who walk to me and say, Doc, I've got scholarship to study abroad, but I need to have a second class upper. My faith is in your hand. Mm -hmm. Your scores is the only scores that we want to add up to my GPA for me to get second class upper. Say, I don't know my script. I don't know how I did in these exams, but my faith is in your hands. They show me a letter, yes. Condition, full scholarship. How mean can I be to sit down mm -hmm. just to, 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 to pass five marks B? Five marks B -O, <laughs> to let this person get second class lower. <laughs> Master, so you see, you've you got to make certain movement. Yeah. And that to me is important. So do your part. It's very important. Great network. You can have wonderful ideas. You don't even have the money. Friends can. And I like small beginnings, humble beginnings. I love that. Some people are thinking about great things. Great things start with small. Let's start small. If you can handle few, you can handle a lot. So I always encourage people, start from simple things. Start from simple things. You know, sometimes be crazy enough, even during the time of university or graduation, go and be at the roadside and sell. Just, 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 just feel it. And ideas will come into your mind. Take a walk, take a nap. Let something comes into your mind. Right. Thank you, Doc. And this one is asking, what is the relationship between innovation and creativity? Okay, many a times these two keywords become very important. What you can innovate, you know, you can create. What you create, you innovate. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you look at this dictionary definition, people will say, oh, something that is not already there that you are doing. But put it quite simple. We all born to be creative. Look at what is already there. Why is it not working? How can I make it better for people and myself? And that is why we talk about human-centered. If it is human-centered, it's the person. How does the person want it to be done? Unfortunately, sometimes you see people mediocritically. And I like what pastor says every Sabbath. Deliberate mediocrity is a sin. And he says that all the time, every Sabbath. And I believe that it gets into people's head. Because many things that we do, I say to you, I don't know which church you go to. You never sit church in this 21st century and see microphone going, boo! Why? 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 Things, things have to change. We've got to do things. You know, micro, proper microphone, you don't talk much, you know. Hello, and to everybody's ear. Even when you are singing, hello, and people bang, 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 bang. What is all that? No, things have to be done so differently. <laughs> I do have to be honest with you, I've forgotten the question. But whatever I'm saying, I hope it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, right. so what question was it again? Does it need to get much before you can start a business on its own? Like I think this one was capital. creativity and innovation. Oh, uh, yeah. That was Sorry. It. Difference so between you, innovation so and creativity. You, you, you forgot it. So again, yes, that's the whole point <laughs> you're talking about. So we are saying that when you look at it very much, you need to innovate. Okay. You need to innovate because if you do not innovate, people will pass you by and okay. you'll be out of business the next day. All right. Thank you, Doc. And this one says, thank you, Doctor. I came in late. And I want to know how you develop the right side of your brain. Wonderful. I, I love that. I love that. I, those who are listening to us, if you want to do that, there are basic things that you do. For instance, you can actually write from 200 and taking away seven from it. You see, we don't do things from that. If I ask you to give me, um, you know, uh, maybe counting from, from 100 backwards, right? Mm -hmm. Adria, let's try that with you. <laughs> We're counting backwards, so we're taking seven from it. So it becomes what? 93 yeah, yeah, minus 93. 7, you are stuck right <laughs> there. Something. You are stuck right there. You yeah. know, and you saw the picture I put there yeah. mentioning the colors instead of the words. 
there's a bit of thing you are not being able to do it. Yeah. There's quite a lot of them. I have one popular one called, have you seen, have you heard about Harry who was needed in the army from the left to the right, hip, hip and hooray. <laughs> a lot of people can't do that because you do what I say. That is the instruction. Yeah. So when I go, have you seen, have you heard about Headley who was needed in the army from the left to the right, from the front to the back, hip, hip and hooray. And I go, have you seen, have you heard? You see almost everybody. <laughs> going there and then i turn around and yeah. say you can hear from your head instead of hearing from your ears and that is why there's a problem so it is a continuous thing we need to develop it academic institution has not helped us in this dimension in fact the way we are taught in the various primary schools it is more about two poor kind of system so it has allowed us not to create creatively develop the right side of the brain but every single person with potential has the ability to be able to develop the right side of the brain Thank you, Doctor. This one says, I love this topic. I'm glad to be on this platform and I'm watching live. My greeting to Doc and will be happy if I can get his contact. And uh, this one says, my name is Sandra. Doc, please, what can you say about network marketing? Network marketing, I think I put it on the screen, right? Yeah, Various forms, now you call it e-commerce. Yeah. People are doing so much business. There's a woman out there who sells, but he doesn't have the market. Could you be able to sell? Sometimes when it comes to this delivery, we say selling water to the well. Sales techniques. Do you have what it takes to sell? And would you be able to approach somebody and really look at a person in the face and say, look, you need this one. He said, I already got it. He said, you need this because this is different. So again, we have opportunity to be able to excel. And we can only do this by being able to sit back and package ourselves. Preparation, that should meet what? Opportunity. All right. God who have done his bit and the rest we do in it to be able to glorify his name thanks so much doc and um, please any final words for the youth my final word is simple no matter where you are you can do more than you are doing right now but there's something in you you have not looked at it yet you've not developed it yet some of you could become good athletes your physique some of you can become good when it comes to cooking seamstress hairdressing you know matter your academic qualification there are some of them it comes so handy is that things that you do and people say wow i was looking at you sitting over here and i was asking myself has she really been on set too many times and i like how you pose and how you find a way of looking and you have to really get a video and look at your own self how beautiful you are even presented and you're doing it so very well it could be a start by start to finish or a start to continue you have the choice don't die when your music is playing so i want to finish with a story i like that and I'll share this story in a brief. He was a young man. As he sat down at church, the pastor has chosen to speak about the great God. The God who is so very great in all dimension. But the young man got to church very worried. Listen to the scripture from the sermon, the impossibility of God. He was alarmed. So he sat down quietly and he started whispering a word. Tokyo, Tokyo. Tokyo. The pastor had it. When the church was over, he was shaking everybody's hands. He got to this young boy and said, young boy, you were worried. You were praying for the city Tokyo. What has happened? He said, pastor, you read my lips. Yesterday in my geography exams, one question I'm supposed to get right. What is the capital town of France? Pastor, I chose Tokyo. Today I came to church with a burden on my heart. And Lord, through you, you have lifted the burden. Because you said God does great things. Mine is very minute. I want the great God to change the capital town of France to Tokyo. <laughs> so my lecturer will mark me right. And so be it. Whatever God decided to do afterwards, I don't care much. Pastor looked at him. He gave him a hug and smile. But Pastor said, boy, I don't want to disappoint you. The mighty God do great things. But I tell you for a fact, you have to go and rewrite the paper. God ain't going to change the capital town of France to Tokyo. You will fill the paper. Prepare for a second World Cup. The boy was sad. What is the lesson in this for us? You gotta do what you gotta do. God will do his part. Zacchaeus learned how to climb a tree before the tree became opportunity. When people complain about problems, entrepreneurs will look at that opportunity and will provide solution. I pray that the Almighty God will give you that wisdom of solution to every problem that confronts you, every challenges that will go through. Because poverty is not your option. Or portion. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Doc.
don't die whilst your music is playing. We want to say a big thank you for um, taking time off your busy schedule to be with us. God bless you so much. And to our viewers, this is where today's session ends, and this is where our seminars end for the NAS Congress 2020. Nonetheless, the Congress continues, and we want to ask you and encourage you all to stay tuned for all our other programs. I'm Lydia Kue, your host. God bless you.